Hi, I'm going to talk about our paper on the power of multiple anonymous messages, frequency estimation and selection, the shuffled model of differential privacy. This is joint work with Badi Ghazi, Ravi Kumar, Rasmus Pa, and Amaya Velenker, and I'm Noah Golowicz. I'll begin by reviewing the central and local models of differential privacy, and then I'll discuss the shuffled model of differential privacy, which is the main topic of this talk. After that, I'll talk about um, our main results uh, in the paper. Uh, the first is a lower bound uh, for the problem of frequency estimation in the single message shuffle model. And roughly, what we show is roughly speaking that the phenomenon of privacy amplification by shuffling <clears throat> leads to optimal protocols for the frequency estimation problem. And then I'll talk about how we can in fact surpass these lower bounds using the multi-message shuffle model. And I'll discuss how we can make those protocols communication efficient. So we're going to assume that there's a universe U, which is simply a finite set, and there's n users, each of which provides an element of U as its data point. The collection of these n users' data points uh, is called the data set, which is denoted by a capital X. Now, the goal of differential privacy is for the users to release certain statistics of the data set X in a way that respects each user's individual privacy. And in the central model, the way they do this is that each user first sends their data point XI uh, to a trusted analyzer. This could be, for instance, uh, a computer operated by a large company or, or a government. And then this trusted analyzer adds noise to the desired statistics of the data set capital X. And we denote that the output of the analyzer by A of X. And in general, this is gonna be a random variable. Now, the algorithm A, which maps X to A of X, is defined to be epsilon delta differentially private for positive real numbers epsilon and delta if roughly speaking for all neighboring data sets x and x prime which differ in a single element the distribution of a of x is similar to the distribution of a of x prime uh, formally we require that the probability of any event t occurring under uh, the data set x is at most e to the epsilon times the probability of t occurring when the data set is x prime uh, plus an additive term of delta. Now, one issue with the central model of differential privacy is that a trusted analyzer may not be available in many applications, and this motivates uh, the local model of differential privacy. Here, the analyzer is now untrusted, and therefore the users must add the privacy preserving noise themselves. So, in particular, in the local model, in addition to an analyzer A, there's also local randomizers for each user. And we denote this, uh, these by, by R of X. Given an input X, the user first local randomizes on its own end and it sends the output of the local randomizer R of X to the untrusted analyzer. And that then performs an analysis on the R of X1 through R of X n. And the output is denoted by A of R of X1 through R of X n. Now the algorithm induced by the local randomizer R is defined to be epsilon delta differentially private in the local model if the function that takes x to r of x is itself epsilon delta differentially private. And by this, we mean that your epsilon delta differentially private as a function on data sets of a single element, namely the single element x. And in particular, this requires a distribution of r of x to be similar to the distribution of r of x prime for all x and x prime uh, in the universe. This is a pretty strong condition that necessitates adding a lot of noise. And even for simple problems, such as the problem of aggregation, the error, uh, the additive error in the local model of differential privacy has to be on the order of the square root of the number of users. And this is often pretty undesirable in practice. So in this talk, I'll discuss one solution to this problem, which is the shuffled model of differential privacy. So here we assume that there's a trusted shuffler noted by S in between the N users and the untrusted analyzer. Now, given the user's uh, inputs R of X1 through R of Xn, the trusted shuffler randomly permutes those randomized, uh, uh, the outputs of the local randomizers, and then sends their permuted messages to the untrusted analyzer, which then outputs A of the shuffled messages. And now here's how privacy is defined uh, in the shuffle model. 
the algorithm induced by the local randomizer R and the shuffler S is defined to be epsilon delta differential pyrite in the shuffle model. If the function which takes the data set uh, X1 to Xn, to the shuffled output of the concatenation of R of X1 through R of Xn is itself epsilon delta differential pyrite. Now, one important distinction I'll make in the shuffle model is the difference between the single message versus uh, the multi-message shuffle model. In general, R of X, I, uh, for any user, I may output M distinct messages, in which case the shuffle S applies random permutation to M times N uh, different messages. Now, in a special case where M equals one, we're gonna call that the single message shuffle model. And here the shuffler only permutes uh, N messages. In the general case where M is larger than one, uh, we will call that uh, the multi-message shuffle model. Now, one reason to care about the single message shuffle model in particular is a phenomenon that was uh, discovered uh, in some recent papers uh, called privacy amplification by shuffling. And what these recent papers showed uh, is the following. Suppose we have a local randomizer R, which is epsilon L zero differentially applied in the local model for some epsilon L uh, larger than zero. Then when we shuffle uh, these messages, the resulting single message shuffle model, so we're shuffling one message for each user, which is simply the output of R of X, uh, that resulting shuffle model uh, protocol, SR, is epsilon S delta differential private in the single message shuffle model for some privacy parameter epsilon S, which is a lot less than epsilon L, and for some delta, which is not too large. Now, these results are neat because they allow us to essentially design single message shuffle model protocols uh, in a black box manner by first taking a locally differentially uh, private protocol with a bad privacy parameter and then amplifying it using privacy amplification by shuffling. And one application of this general uh, principle is for frequency estimation protocols. So here the universe is the set of integers from one to B for some positive and integer B. And the goal is to compute the frequency of each element J between one and B. In particular, you want the number of users I uh, who hold element J, in other words, such that XI uh, is equal to J. And we measure the error for frequency estimation by additive error. So it's the maximum over all J, the true frequency of J minus the estimated frequency of J. And we take the absolute value of that. And so this is some integer between uh, one and uh, zero and n. Now, using amplification by shuffling, uh, it's possible to show uh, the following upper bound and the error of frequency estimation in the single message shuffle model. You can show that you can perform frequency estimation on a domain of size um, uh, b uh, with error which is roughly equal to the minimum of n to the one fourth and b to the one half, uh, up to polylogarithmic factors in n and b. Now to get the upper bound of n to the one fourth, you simply shuffle the output of the local randomizer given by the Rapport Protocol by Erling Simdahl. And you get the upper bound of b to the one half, you shuffle the output of the local randomizer given by Warner's randomized response. And our first main theorem is to show that this is actually uh, optimal um, in the single message shuffle model uh, up to polylogarithmic factors. So in particular, what we show is that for any uh, differentially private shuffle, single message shuffled model protocol for frequency estimation. The additive error must be roughly at least the minimum of n to the one fourth and b to the one half. Okay, so now we'll discuss the proof of our, our, our lower bound. Um, the first idea of the proof is to use a reduction that was discovered by Chu et al. A few, a few years ago. And this shows that any epsilon S delta differentially private protocol in the single message shuffle model implies the existence of an equivalent protocol in the local model, which is epsilon S plus natural log of N uh, delta uh, differentially private. And what this means is that if we can show a lower bound for locally DP protocols uh, for frequency estimation, where the epsilon parameter is roughly the natural log of N, which is quite large, we can get a corresponding lower bound for the single message shuffle model. And this is exactly uh, what we do. So in particular, our main lower bound in the local model is, is the following. If the privacy parameter epsilon L is roughly equal to a constant 
times the natural log of n. And delta L is sufficiently small, say roughly a uh, little of one over n. Then any epsilon L delta L locally differentiated private fre frequency estimation protocol must have error at least roughly one over the square root of n times e to the epsilon L over four. Now, using the result by Chodel, this result implies our lower bound on the single message shuffle model. Now, note also that this theorem that we show also improves upon previous work by Ducci et al. Um, for locally differentially private frequency estimation. Ducci et al. showed a lower bound uh, of omega 1 over root n times e to the epsilon l. Now, in the regime where epsilon l is a constant times a natural log of n, e to the epsilon l is a polynomial n, and thus our lower bound improves upon the prior work uh, by a poly n factor. And I'll also note that the uh, lower bound of Ducci et al. only applies to the case of pure differentially uh, private frequency estimation, namely where delta L is equal to zero. Uh, whereas our theorem applies in the case of approximate DP, where delta L is, is allowed to be positive. Okay, so now we'll discuss the proof idea of our local bound for local uh, differentially private uh, frequency estimation. And roughly speaking, what we want to use is Fano's method. What this means is that let's let alpha be the desired lower bound on the error of frequency estimation. Now the goal is to show a certain upper bound on the mutual information between two quantities. Now to define these, to define these two quantities, I'll let V be a uniformly random element of universe um, of integers from one to V. And let X be a perturbed version of V. In particular, let's suppose that X is equal to V with probability alpha. And it's a fresh draw from the universe with probability uh, one minus alpha. Now the main step in our lower bound is, just, is to show an upper bound on the mutual information between V and R of X, where remember that R out denotes the output of the local randomizer given input X. You want this upper bound to be roughly alpha to the four times N times E to the epsilon L. Now, what makes this proof a uh, tad tricky is that this upper bound is actually false for general local randomizers R, even those which satisfy epsilon L delta differentially private, uh, differential privacy. So in order to show the desired result, we actually additionally have to use the fact that R can be used together with an analyzer that leads to a protocol with error bounded above by alpha. In other words, we have to use the accuracy of the entire protocol um, in, order to, uh, in order to show this upper bound of mutual information. And this use of accuracy uh, seems to be a little bit new um, in, the, in the line of work on uh, lower bounds for, for differential privacy in, in the local model. Okay, so the takeaway from our lower bounds for a single message shuffle model is that we must have error which is polynomial in either N or B. Now, this could be quite undesirable in practice since N and B can basically both be quite large and uh, it would make the resulting statistics uh, you know, potentially unusable if the error is too large. So we'll talk about how to get error, which is polylogarithmic n and b next. And to do this, we'll have to use the multi-message shuffle model, of course. Now, before doing so, I'm gonna first review the measures of efficiency uh, that we require our protocol um, to satisfy. The first is communication complexity or cost, and that's very straightforward. It's just the total length of all messages output by a single user, which is measured by the number of bits. The second measure of efficiency is computation. So to define, to define the computation cost of our algorithm, we're gonna only focus on the computation complexity of the analyzer because the, the user's algorithms are always gonna be very efficient. Now the issue for the, uh, with respect to computation cost of the analyzer is that the domain size B might be much larger than the number of users N and it could be infeasible to compute the frequencies of all elements J between one and B. So the solution is to require the analyzer to output a frequency oracle, FO, which takes as input a query J from one to B <clears throat> and outputs a frequency FJ, which is an integer from zero to N to denote the estimated frequency of item J in the data set. And we measure computation by measuring the query time which is the amount of time taken by a single query uh, J to the frequency oracle. 
Now, one more resource we'll allow our algorithms to use <clears throat> is that of public coins. And so up to now, all protocols I've talked about have had private coins. But the analyzer, um, and in particular, the analyzer uses its own local randomness to output uh, the randomized response R of X. And now for one of the protocols I'll present in the uh, multi-message shuffle model, we'll allow all the local randomizers to access a common random string of public random bits. But importantly, these bits can also be viewed by the untrusted analyzer. Okay, so here's our main theorem for frequency estimation in the multi-message shuffle model. We show that there exists protocols which are epsilon delta differentially private and have the following properties. Um, so there's two protocols that we consider, that we prove. Um, the first is based on the count min sketch. The second is based on the Hadamard response. Both of these protocols have error, which is polylogarithmic in N and B, and also which uh, communication polylogarithmic in N and B, but they differ in the query time. The count min sketch uses public coins, but it has smaller query time, namely polylog in N and B. The head of our response does not use public coins, it only uses private coins, but its query time is uh, roughly order n, linear in the number of users. Now, roughly speaking, the public coins um, that the count min sketch uses are used to perform hashing, whereas the head of our response achieves a similar functionality in a different way. <clears throat> now here, <clears throat> <clears throat> now, <clears throat> now here's the idea um, uh, for how to construct uh, multi-message frequency estimation protocols. The first step is to view frequency estimation as B parallel aggregation problems. In the Jth problem for each element J between one and B, we simply want to add up the number of users holding that element, that item J. And for each user, that's going to be simply a bit, either a one or zero denoting whether that user holds the item J. And it was observed by Chu et al. in 2018 that for this very simple aggregation pr uh, problem, there is a local randomizer, which we denote by R ag, um, for which we can perform aggregation in this shuffle model with polylogarithmic error. Now let's concatenate B of these local randomizers, one for each element of the domain. And have each user output uh, B different messages, one uh, uh, basically a one hot encoding of, of which uh, of which of the uh, B elements that user has. And what this gives us in the multi-message shuffle model is a protocol um, uh, with uh, polylogarithmic error uh, to perform the frequency estimation problem. Now the issue is that because each user has to output B different messages, one corresponding to each element in the domain, uh, the communication cost has to be at least on the order of B. And this might be very large in practice. It might be, uh, might make it infeasible in practice. So the second idea of a proof is to use a trick, um, either using the Kautman sketch, the Hadamard my response to uh, avoid having to send B separate messages. And for the rest of this talk, I'll focus on our protocol based on the Hadamard response. Uh, you can see our protocol, our paper for the protocol based on the count min sketch. I'll begin by uh, introducing the Hadamard response, which is actually a locally differentially private protocol for frequency estimation. And for simplicity, let's assume that the domain size B is one less than a power of two. So we can consider the Hadamard matrix, which has B plus uh, one rows and columns, and delete the first row. And we're going to denote that resulting matrix by H. So each of the B times B plus one elements of H is either a minus one or a plus one. Now here's how Hadamard response is defined. For an element X between one and B, R of X is gonna be an integer um, uh, defined as follows. So it's probably E to the epsilon over one plus E to the epsilon. R of X is uniform over the columns K of the matrix H such that H X K is equal to one. And with the remaining probability, one over e to the one plus epsilon, r of x is uniform over the columns k of h, such that h x k is equal to minus one. It's known that this protocol gets error roughly equal to the square root of n log b divided by epsilon in the local model of differential privacy. 
It's also clearly epsilon zero differential private, and it's also communication efficient because each user just has to send log b bits um, to the analyzer. Now, here's how we can um, send this protocol to the signal message shuffle model in a way that makes it allows it to remain communication efficient. Given an input, input x in the domain, the local randomizer is going to output several messages. One of these messages, which we denote in green here, is essentially a signal message. And this gives information about what x is. We denote this message by m, and it's simply a concatenation of log n indices of the columns, the Hadamard matrix. We denote these by m1 through m log n. And each of these items is uniform over the columns of h, so that hxk is equal to 1. We call that those are the columns that were outputted with higher probability under Hadamard response. Additionally, we're going to take an, we're going to output a bunch of noise messages noted in red here. In a particular, let rho equal to a parameter which is roughly log 1 over delta over epsilon squared. It denotes the number of noise messages. And we're going to have uh, noise messages noted by m tilde 1 through m tilde rho. And each of them is simply a uh, drawn uniformly from each of the log n length tuples of integers from 1 to b plus 1. And each of those log n integers is drawn uniformly uh, from 1 to b plus 1. Notice, notice that each of these uh, uh, noise messages is completely independent of x. And they're added purely to preserve uh, the differential privacy. The local randomizer R of X is the concatenation of these row plus one messages. Now, roughly speaking, uh, we have accuracy because we've concatenated enough indices of columns of H in that single signal message in order for the analyzer to determine estimates uh, for frequencies for each, uh, for each of the elements in the domain. Now, privacy is a little bit trickier to show, but roughly speaking, it follows uh, because the number of noise messages M tilde L that are consistent with any given uh, row of our matrix is a binomial random variable, which is sufficiently smooth. And by consistent with the row X, what I mean is that those messages are messages the user could have outputted if their true data point uh, was X. Okay, in our paper, we have several additional results. Uh, the first result that we show is, uh, the first additional result is a lower bound on the sample complexity of the selection problem in the single message shuffle model. Uh, we show a lower bound of omega d, uh, where d is the number of elements in the selection problem. And this is tied up to a logarithmic factor because it's known that you can solve this problem with d log d uh, samples, order d log d samples in the single message of the model. Uh, we also show a corollary of the Hadamard response based protocol, uh, that, which I talked about, uh, which shows how to efficiently implement uh, certain families of non adaptive statistical query algorithms in the shuffle model. In particular, we show this for statistical Corby algorithms, which are sparse in the sense that for any element of the universe, there's a bounded number of uh, statistical queries for, uh, that evaluate to one on that element. Uh, finally, there's many applications of our upper bounds for frequency estimation uh, beyond what I've discussed here, such as for range queries and quantile estimation. Uh, and you can find our paper at this link. Okay, I'll finally discuss some open problems. One open problem is whether or not it's possible to decrease the roughly linear query time that's achieved by Hadamard response uh, for private coin frequency estimation, the multi-message shuffle model. We can do this with public coins using Kaplan sketch. A second open problem is uh, the problem of selection on D elements. There's a multi-message shuffle model protocol with sample complexity order root D, which beats the single message shuffle model uh, lower bound of omega D, but it's unknown if we can do better. And the central model is possible to get log D sample complexity. This seems to be a pretty challenging and very interesting open question. Uh, and that's it, thank you for listening.